So welcome once again. I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, Prescription for Your Transformation. Real, real, uh, real conversations, uh, real people, and uh, real success. And introducing today, Dr. Michael Sheehan, um, a digital photographer, a fine art uh, photographer, as well as a psychiatrist. And he brings a very interesting uh, perspective on um, photography. And when we actually talk about ph photography, it's really that opportunity for us to express something different for the purview for the for the privilege of other people as well the exciting thing about photography today is that with the advance of digital photography and the means to manipulate the photographs it brings a whole new uh, form of of art and you know dr sheehan is one of those people that's really do dove into this type of photography and done some remarkable work, and in fact, some recreations of other famous artists. So Dr. Sheehan, thank you for joining me today. It's a great pleasure. So tell me a little bit about um, your personal journey. I like to get into a journey first, and and later on talk about you know what's very unique about your focus in photography as it relates to some of the fine artists from the past and recreating them today. But you have a very special journey beginning, and I think you just showed me a picture earlier on um, when you were two or three years old with a photograph, with a camera. Sure. Um, my dad was a photographer and always, he was a, he was a surgeon and a photographer, um, and he always carried a camera with him. And he had just an amazing collection of photographs of his patients in various States, which he then used as an educational tool to teach medical students throughout his life. And he was very famous, actually, in Ireland at the time for his, his uh, photographs. But when I was a kid growing up, um, he always had the camera around, and so I was really familiar with it. And I loved anything to do with optics, so lenses, cameras, telescopes, anything like that I loved to play with. So I had my first box camera when I was about six years old, and I used to play around with that. And then when I was 11 or 12, going into getting into high school, uh, my dad gave me his camera, a Leica, and that was just so much fun. Um, I got into obviously taking photographs, taking sports photographs, portraits, um, and also I learned how to use the dark room, use the enlarger, um, and enter into some competitions. And then when I went to med school, um, I continued to take photographs, make a lot of slides, um, but ultimately, it wasn't very satisfying because you had to take a week or two to get your photographs back, and you really couldn't do much processing with them afterwards. So whatever you saw on the camera is what you got, but you couldn't play around a whole lot with them at that point. Um, so that was the, the 70s. Uh, and then the 80s, I got more fancy cameras. And then in the 90s, um, I started to work in digital. And I was like a lot of other photographers who like to take photographs on vacation or yes, they pull the camera out, they take some photos. Um, I liked to play with flash some of the time, but I wasn't very adept. Um, but in the uh, 15 to 10 years ago, uh, I got much more into doing Photoshop, playing with the, with the images and started to learn to be able to manipulate some of them a little better. Um, so about six years ago, um, I decided to become part of a group called um, Health Portrait, where we were taking photographs of women in my program, in my residential addiction program, and basically giving back to these women photographs of themselves uh, uh, done by professional people. So I had a whole bunch of professional photographer friends who came in. We, we had six studios and printed them all up and gave them photographs themselves so they could show these photographs to their families that this is not my mugshot, my addicted self, this is the kind of person that I should be able to become. And so it was wonderful, uh, possible. it was kind of very hopeful. The patients loved those photographs and look forward to every year when we used to do those. And um, Health Portrait is um, an international um, shootout that professional photographers get involved in once a year at the beginning of December. So I've been doing that for the last like seven years. And so that introduced me to um, Scott Kelby who runs Photoshop World, and um, he is had been very much involved in education on Photoshop and digital imaging, and I met all of his team and got involved in a group uh, at that point in time called the, the Tampa Bay Scopist uh, and Photoshop Collective. And at that point, there were only like 
40 or 50 people in that group and now we're like at 1200 people and we organize um, meetups where models come out we get them dressed up we get makeup artists to do their makeup and it becomes more fantastic as time goes on and so so basically every couple of weeks I go out and I'll shoot with this group and I have had the opportunity to learn how to take much better professional photographs and portraits mainly and that's mainly what I've been doing in the last couple of years so about a year ago, just just over a year ago, one of the models came up to me and she said, can I do, can I take her, her headshot? So I said, yes. And she said, well, what can I do for you? And I said, well, what I've always wanted to do is to take a photograph of uh, the girl with the pearl earring. So you actually see there's a the copy of it is up here behind me. So she came over to my house and we set up the lights. And, you know, it took me about 20 minutes to photograph this. And uh, I adjusted it and made it look more like the original um, that I had actually seen in San Francisco about a year ago. Yep. So it, was, it was an exciting moment for me to actually to be able to recreate a, a portrait that looked very much like one of the original masters. Um, throughout my life, I've always been interested in art and anywhere I would go traveling, one of the main priorities would be to go to the art museums or to the main uh, large galleries in the cities. So I've traveled all over Europe and anywhere in the United States. I would love to go to the, the art galleries and check out all the artwork. So to actually be able to reproduce something like that was very exciting for me. But I thought, well, this is going to be the end of it. But I showed it to some of my friends and they said, oh, no, 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 this is, this is amazing. This is really good stuff. You need to do more. And I said, it's, it's too difficult. It's too, there's too much work involved in getting all the details in. So one of my friends, Myra, uh, she said, well, I can help you. It's like, I will help build the studio. And her husband actually built the studio so that we could actually recreate the uh, girl pouring milk and also the lady with the balance. And we got all the props together and we got the models together. We've got the clothes, we got the, the wicker, and we got the earthenware. We made the tiles, we painted the walls. Um, and ultimately, we got another couple of photographs that have been very, very popular and have won a couple of prizes. And when I showed those around, then more artistic folk uh, came into my life and we decided we would actually have a, um, a group for uh, professional uh, photographers who are interested in fine art work rather than just plain portraiture. And so I thought, wow, this is really cool. And I've been involved in that for the last year. And this group um, has helped me to be, uh, get my photographs in a variety of forms, not just the portraiture stuff, um, in about uh, seven or eight different galleries around Pinellas County and Hillsborough County in this last year. So that's been exciting to be involved in that new group too. So I'm very much now involved in trying to help other people to, about uh, fine art, about composition of photographs, about lighting, uh, through my engagement with various aspects of photography in Tampa at this time. So what, a, what, a what a wonderful journey. Um, and so, so let me ask you this, you know, as you're talking, I was thinking to myself, well, you know, over you know, the last several centuries, I mean, art has been, you know, prevalent in our culture and it's been educational, it's been inspirational, um, and a variety of different, you know, topics, <clears throat> if you will, of our own human experience. And so I'm kind of curious, you know, your thoughts on when you perform the, these, you know, fine, when you do these, you know, fine art uh, photography or, or, or photos, if you will, um, you know, what is the impact on people? And, and what is the, the reaction of people? And, and what's the, the benefit, if you will, for people? Because in today's world, I'm not so sure there are many great artists around, at least I'm not aware of them. And besides if they were, perhaps they're not as accessible. And photography clearly is a lot more accessible to people. And so I'm curious, what are your thoughts? Well, I think that's a very complicated question. Um, we can get back into the whole, what's the purpose of art? And what are the different styles and genres of art? Uh, and even what are the main styles and genres of photography? <clears throat> So um, I think if you look back at art, a lot of art originally was representative and uh, documentary. And so it would document historical events or historical situations. And then as time went on, people wanted to have their likeness um, reproduced and they would make 
get paint, get painters to paint their likenesses, and that became an increasing um, thing for people to do in the 14th, 15th, 16th century. And so you go, when you go to galleries now, there are lots of portraiture stuff. And then obviously there was a lot of work done uh, prior to that uh, from a religious point of view. A lot of religious uh, scenes were painted as um, helping people to understand particular stories. So when after the Renaissance, when the religious uh, themes became less, people were painting more allegorical scenes, uh, stories, stories that could be pictorialized. Um, various different styles uh, after the Renaissance, you know, the Baroque style, the uh, the Impressionist style, uh, all of these different styles continue to develop and, and are still prevalent up to this day. Um, photography originally was more documentary, and the, although that was the first photographs were taken in the like 1840s or something, um, documentary photography became increasingly prevalent. There were photographs of the war, photographs of people, especially. Um, but then as people start to fuse more artistic uh, ideas or themes into that, um, people used to take more um, artistic photographs. Um, so there are a number of different kinds. There's documentary photographs, the ones that you see in the newspapers, the ones that you see on the internet uh, that are more just descriptive of, of particular things. But um, art photography goes beyond that. And so it, it may have... Uh, a more meaningful story behind just the, what you initially see on the picture. And that's what art photography is kind of looking at, is what can you see beyond this and what kind of a reaction are you going to elicit in the person? What are they going to think about? What kind of an emotional reaction are you going to get? Uh, obviously, things like propaganda uh, photographs have an impact on, on helping people to raise funds, for instance, or to motivate people for political means. Uh, they are very, very powerful um, photographs. Uh, but photojournalistic style is not supposed to be, change the original form of the photograph. I mean, the, there are a number of different genres, and if you go photojournalistic style, you basically don't make any changes. You just take the photograph as it is and don't adjust it. Uh, whereas the artistic photograph, you can adjust it whatever way you want, and you can distort whatever you want to bring out the artist's message, whatever the message or the thought or feeling that the artist sees in that particular scene uh, a lot of those adjustments make it look more painterly, uh, but uh, allow the allow the artist more latitude to uh, to tell a different story or to induce certain feelings and thoughts. Because I would imagine, you know, what a great answer, by the way, and, and thank you for this, you know, educational perspective of and the history of art and photography. And and again, you know, this is what's so much fun about this platform, you know, is to explore these things that perhaps many people, and in fact, I didn't quite uh, know. So, you know, as an artist, when you're work, doing your work, I can imagine that you're very focused on that particular message, that particular experience, that particular story or emotion. And what I find particularly, you know, exciting then is that then you're presenting uh, an image to someone else that otherwise would never have been able to see that image, would never have been able to have that experience. And it's almost like you awaken something within people that can only help them expand, can only help them grow. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Well, somebody said that literature is the highest form of art. And having thought about that, it's like in literature, you are able to describe in a lot of, a lot of detail uh, and to the extent that you would like to, what, how the other person is likely to respond to their story. And you can describe people's thoughts, you can describe people's feelings, you can describe people's fantasies, all just in a few pages. And with a photograph, uh, it's, it's more difficult. You've only got one medium. You've got a, a two-dimensional plane upon which that you can put anything you want, but you're trying to get an, a message or an idea across. And the problem with photography is a lot of times uh, people take photo, or I would say take a photograph with one idea in my mind about what I want to express, but I really don't have any control over how the other person who is watching it is actually going to experience that, whether they will have a very traumatic reaction to that particular scene or what, what uh, or how they will respond, whether they get bored with it easily or, or not. So for instance, um, somebody said, 
a photograph is successful if somebody looks at it for more than four seconds. So in our life, in our normal uh, interaction with the world, um, when we see printed uh, photographs or photographs on the screen, we generally don't spend more than a couple of seconds just looking at it and then immediately absorbing it, immediately getting the impression and then moving on to the next thing. And so it's kind of the purpose of art photography and this is worthwhile. So uh, I was reading something very recently this morning about the slow art movement. And the slow art movement suggests that if you go to a, an art gallery, instead of racing around and spending five, 10, 15 seconds looking at a painting, maybe you should sit down and watch for an hour and just look at one painting for an hour and see and kind of absorb more of the thoughts and feelings and what do you see in this picture or painting as time goes on. And it's a different feeling to it. So those are just some of my thoughts about uh, what you can get out of a picture and how much time you get to spend um, and the value of a photograph as opposed to something that's written. My wife reads all the time. I'm not a huge reader, um, mm. but I do love to look at photographs and I look at, I mean, I must look at hundreds of photographs every day. And I also look at historical photographs and the photographs of the famous photographers before and lots of art paintings just gathering thoughts and feelings and impressions from you know old painters and new painters different styles last weekend i was at uh, the frida Kahlo exhibition which was awesome it was very interesting to see her perspective and then i went around the dali museum and each of his paintings you can easily spend you know 5 10 15 minutes looking at it to try and absorb what was this guy saying or what what was was there any meaningfulness behind it or how does it really impact you as a person and how do you feel which is kind of the whole function of art if there's a whole meditative act, action in art and um, that people often don't appreciate just like they go they nibble at it they walk off rather than really savoring the whole experience interesting so um, obviously when you're working on your photography you're working on your art and you're thinking about whatever or you're aware of how you feel about it. You're aware of, you're thinking of, of your message, perhaps. You're thinking of the emotions that you want to, you know, express. How much time are you also thinking about the people that are going to be seeing this? Uh, personally, I don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about how other people are going to react in the process of trying to take the photograph. I'm more involved while I'm in the process of taking the photograph is actually looking at what's inside the frame. Um, and I think that's one of the strange things. A normal person taking a photograph will often just center a figure in the middle of the picture and take the photograph and they will be think, oh, that's a really cool photograph. Now, if I look at that same photograph, I'm going to look at this photograph as an art piece and I will look at the person's, say, if it's a portrait, I will look at the person's face in the middle and then I will look at all around the corners of the frame of the picture. What else is in that picture? What else is the picture trying to say? And I'll often be distracted because not good photographers will have all kinds of added distractions in the photograph that diminish its impact. So when I'm taking it, when I'm actually taking a photograph, the background is really important to me and I will place the person in the right situation so that the background is minimally distracted or will add to the photograph itself. And then I would position the person in a way that is appropriate. And then I will also light the person in a way that is striking and interesting. When I, and, but once that setup is done, I want the person who I'm photographing to emote or feel or project something in a particular way. And I will talk to them and make sure that they're relaxed and get that feeling that I'm looking for, that, that expression. And that's kind of the critical part and the most difficult part is getting a model or getting the person is to feel relaxed enough and yet express the inner sense of themselves inside. Now, if you work with, them, with lots of models, it's like some of them are really good at that and they can really express that really well. And lots of the photographs that you take will be very expressive. And some uh, less good models are you know, very kind of expressionless and they won't give you very much at all and it's difficult to work with them. But that's been part of the game. It's like, how do you get someone to, to be in a relaxed state so that they can feel comfortable enough so that you can take the photograph and move ahead? Once the photograph is taken, that's the first half of the job is done. The second half now is looking at the actual photograph that you have, the image, the digital image, and seeing how can you manipulate that to 
bring to, to minimize the distractions uh, so that when a, another person I'm thinking now of what the other person another viewer what the viewer is going to see when they look at my picture I'm thinking what's going to distract them is this compositionally correct is the, is the photograph balanced are there is there a nice color palette is the are the colors that are in this uh, adding to the picture or taking away from the picture so then I'll work on the individual image try and minimize the distractions and simplify as best I can to maximize the impact of the photograph itself. And then, mm -hmm. That's why I'm thinking about, you know, what is, what's another person going to see? If I was looking at this critically, and I don't mean critically in a negative sense, I mean also in a positive sense, right. so what's to like about this photograph and what's not to like, and I'll kind of minimize the things that I don't like so that anybody else looking at it will be distracted, but will, will have something to think about in the, the their thought pattern and their emotional patterns are more clear. Excellent. I love it. You know, I guess that's the one advantage of, of actual painting is that when you have a model and she might have a very scowling face, but you can paint whatever face you want. So that's the one advantage of being a painter versus being that photographer because you know. No, need... I, but I, I don't agree with you. What you can do in Photoshop, you can change the face, you can give her a smile, you can change her eyes, you can do whatever you want. And obviously, in that situation, you don't want it to become unreal. Uh, I mean, that's part of the game when you're doing these things is not to use any of these um, tools in a way that makes it unreal or not. And I find that's that's a big challenge, and um, or that's something that's really quite obvious in, in a lot of the photography that we see today, is that it's been obviously manipulated, and unless you're very good at it, you know it's very easy to tell. And uh, but I have another question for you because one of the things that you like to focus on is the capture of of harmony, of dignity, of, of love, of humanity, and you know as it also relates to environments. And why those? Um, that's an interesting question. I don't know why. Uh, I, I, a number of my other photographic buddies are into the dark side, and they like taking photographs of um, darker themes uh, of, of death and destruction, of depression, of, uh, of abuse. Um, of, and for me, I don't particularly like those pictures. I would, they're not pictures that I would want to put on my wall. I don't want to be reminded of those things. Uh, and I suppose in my, in my professional life as a psychiatrist, I spend my days, eight hours a day, listening to people's stories. Yes, I've heard all of the stories, most of the stories, and I don't want to be then right. surrounded by that again when I go home. It's like I'm more than happy to um, appreciate the more positive things in life, uh, to appreciate human dignity and to try and accentuate that. So my message in my photography in general has been up until now, how can we express your dignity in the most appropriate way? How can you express the kind of more spiritual dimensions to your life? How can you express your interconnections with everything around you? And so when I look at environments, it's like, how does this work? How, how can we express that? And so in my reproduction of the, the girl with the pour, pouring milk, She's just a girl who is pouring milk into a jug on a kitchen table in a kitchen. She's poor. She's not rich, but she is. She seems to be content in her existence. She is interacting in, with work, which is very important. She is comfortable, and it's a very familiar and common type of photograph. And I like to just say, this is normal. It's like, and this is good. And so, can you absorb that as a viewer? Can you absorb that into your soul? Uh, and kind of can that be a counterpoint to other things that are happening in your life? Because in a way, a lot of art is meditative and it is supposed to help to induce kind of a more meditative, thoughtful, considered uh, feeling. You know, and I, and I respect that because, you know, there's enough you know, dark darkness in our life. There's enough tragedy. There's enough horror. There's enough things that we just don't want to know about. And so... And really, quite frankly, I guess most people would rather be happy. I mean, it's it's not it's unthinkable to think that people just choose to be unhappy when they could be unhappy. And so photography or an art, if it can be inspirational, it can give you that opportunity to say, hey, you know what? Life can be good. It doesn't have to be dark. It can be light. It can be beautiful. It can be happy. 
you know, at least even for a moment, perhaps, you know, giving somebody that relief from their own tragedy of life, because that does happen. And I'm sure you've heard a lot of that. I have to respect you as well because of the work that you're doing with this group of women. Because one thing I know as a plastic and a reconstructive and regenerative surgeon, you know, a lot of people are seeking plastic surgery just to help their own confidence, their own self-esteem. They're kind of improving the outside version of themselves simply to match the inside version. And, you know, when somebody gets to, you know, experience an amazing photograph of themselves they're looking at themselves and it's a beautiful photograph i mean that has to have a great impact on them and so uh, tons of respect for you for doing that kind of work and giving these women something that they otherwise you know wouldn't have had and quite possibly really changed their life you know by realizing that you know what they are beautiful well i think it, it gives them and it gives anybody who has a good portrait a a concrete example of what they look like to other people. And mm -hmm. if it is quite respectful, I think it, it helps to build people's confidence in themselves. It's like uh, people's portraits of themselves, you know, you probably rem you remember your own portraits that were taken of you over a period of time. And some of them are good, that they're very comfortable with, and some of them is like they're kind of throwaway. But those, the, the, the good ones are kind of iconographic, you know, it's like they are special. And when people look back on your life, they're the kind of things that people are going to remember most of all. It's like on yep. your grave, when, when, when you go to your funeral, they're going to be looking at those photographs, and they're the ones that are going to be most special. Or, or, the, or the ones in which people were connected into the world, in which they are actually emotional and responsive. It's like people want that, and people appreciate that. It's yeah, spot, spot on, because I have some pictures when back when I was in medical school in, in Holland, because I trained in uh, Rotterdam, and uh, loved uh, to say, I'm urging you Dutch, as you know, and I love to sail, and I have this wonderful picture of myself in just this sailing outfit out there on the waters, and, you know, it's just, just a wonderful time, and it's a wonderful anchor of memory for me as well, and of what's possible in life, and, and I think this is what's so beautiful, and I'm very much drawn to photography as well. Unfortunately, not spending as much time as you are, but, you know, I will soon be changing that, <laughs> because... It's, it's a way for, it's a personal outlet to express what's inside and, and inspire others to have a different experience than they would otherwise have every single day. I mean, there's a reason we have all this graffiti all over, all over town because and when it's nice and fun graffiti and I see sometimes how people do this, this, this art and kind of combine it with the buildings and the trees and you know, it's just quite remarkable what people can do out there just to, you know, lighten up, you know, someone's soul for a moment, lighten up their spirit. Oh, absolutely. But I think the environments are often blighted. And when people paint, paint murals in those situations, something that would normally be kind of bland and dreary, it's like you can transform them into something that's positive and affirming. So I think that's yeah. very, you know, I, I think St. Petersburg has done a wonderful job with its, uh, with its murals. And Tampa is getting there also. But it's like, I love living in this area and seeing new murals going up and even going out and photographing the muralists. I've done that a few times. Like it's been wonderful. Yeah, in fact, uh, hopefully I'll be interviewing a wonderful lady, Gina, who is instrumental in some of these murals in, in St. Petersburg. But anyhow, I really want to thank you for today, Dr. Sheehan. Um, really respect what you do, first of all, as a, as a doctor, but also as a humanitarian and as an artist. And... Uh, you know, I'm excited to have learned you know, quite a few things and hopefully others, you know, will learn you know, from you as well. And if there's a way that people want to reach out to you, what would be the, the best way for that? Um, with regard to this, it's probably through my website. And that's uh, www.michaelsheehanphotos.com. That's easy to join them. If they need to send an email, that, that, will, that will get you to, to me through the website. Great, and I'll make sure we add that to the uh, video tag as well. Well, Dr. Sheehan, thank you so much. Uh, I am Dr. Bart Ranamaker, prescription for your uh, transformation. Uh, real people, real conversations, real success. Very honored to speaking with Dr. Sheehan about uh, fine art photography and really making that connection with the humanity and dignity and love and the environment and really lightening up the soul and the spirit for those around us. So thank you so much, and uh, God bless. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much.